Hi guys, welcome to this week's episode of Work It, my fashion mini. I felt like I had to put it out to you guys to get a couple of questions answered. I get asked a lot about styling advice and I thought why not get the best couple of questions that really kind of got me going. I've got Eddie off camera. She's peppering me with my questions today. So we picked the top 10 for you guys. Let's get into it. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm very excited. This is like, I love I love being asked questions. So I just felt like I had to do it. So let's go. How did you develop your personal style and where do you look for for inspo? Okay, well, I have been obsessed with my personal style since the dawn of time. And it was something that I refined, I would say probably late teens. I got really into, you know, dressing myself. I did a lot of op shops, a lot of vintage. I always bought things in bigger sizes. That's something that stayed very consistent with me. I've always bought menswear. Um, I like to look, you know, I do um, the usual things I look at for my personal style. You know, I look at Instagram influencers. I follow a few, then I don't follow some, and then I go after them. I reference my own style a lot now, and I find the more I'm doing that, the more I'm really, really honoring and enjoying the process of getting dressed a lot. Blazers, boots, big coats, beautiful knits, fun, funky pants. These are actually, the pants I've got on today are actually menswear, um, and they're like a pink pack pink patchwork printed pant. This is like me in a pant, I feel. I love some fun, fun element that I can always work back with more simple pieces. It makes styling really easy because you just need to do one look and then the rest of the looks are pretty simple. Although this Chloe studded jacket's actually very extra. I mean, for two fun extra pieces um, this week. But that's really, it's really all I do. I look at my, I take photos of my outfits and I'll take photos of outfits that I kind of think of and I'll quickly go and put it on. And if I'm not going to wear it, I'll take a photo and I'll store it for later. And I also take note of the way that I feel when I get dressed in the morning as well. So if I put on an outfit and I feel a certain way, I bank that. I might take a photo, write a little note. So the next time I need to feel a certain way, like if I've got a big meeting or I want to go and talk at something and I need to kind of be powerful, I'll refer to that outfit that I had on that day that made me feel that way. Same with I want to feel a bit more feminine, a bit more girly, a bit more fun, a bit more playful. Whatever it is, I tailor my looks around that feeling. Everything is built around feeling the way that I feel in that moment and honoring that. It's just an extension of the way that I feel. So you've stored these photos. Do you plan your outfits a week in advance? Um, no, I don't. I would love to. I do build though. What I do do, what I do weekly, what I do do, what I do do weekly, that doesn't make, actually make sense, um, is build maybe five or six pieces into what I want to wear that week. And then I might do a few outfits around it, or at least I just have an anchor every day into a look that I want to do. So I brought a few of those in and I wanted to show you. So I went for this week, I was thinking of doing like a gold boot. Um, these are new boots. I've not bought them yet. See, the, the, they're very untapped so far. The tag is still on. Also, I always forget to take these off. It's so embarrassing. Um, so I would build a couple of outfits around a gold boot like that. Again, one really extra piece and I build everything around that. So I do that with I think this is going to look super good with black. Um, so I'd probably do that with like a black jean, black pant, black blazer, really simple outfit and make that stand out. And then I could do that again with maybe like a more colorful, like a lighter jean, maybe like a leather jacket. Anyway, I would, I, I, if you have one thing to anchor a look around, you don't have to plan your outfits in advance, but you have these five or six pieces that you know you want to wear that week. And I kind of get my head into building looks around them. So I have a bit of an idea. So I do that. That's one of the pieces I do that with. Another piece that I want to work with this week a bit is a denim jacket, this little Kate white denim jacket. It's an incredible fit. I would build a few looks around that this week. Again, that can be worn with track pants. It can be worn with... Um, you know, black pants, jeans. You can do a matching white jean with it. I mean, this is a very versatile piece, let's be honest. You can layer this as well. Very, very, very important with pieces like this. This is why I go oversized, especially in the winter, is that you can layer that. I can put a knit under that. I can put another tank under that. I can put a scarf over the top of that. And I can have like a very warm layered styled look. That's another piece that I build my outfit around. Um, and that's kind of what I do. You know, a knit. I'm really into cashmere knits at the moment for warmth, for layering. And I just kind of work back with those five or six pieces. And that's how I build out my looks for the week. Of course, we'd love to plan our outfits the week before, but I don't have time to do that. I just like to have a few in my mind pieces that I'm going to go for in the morning. 
how do you shop for quality fabrics, dressing for your body type, and how do you get yourself out of a style rut? Yeah, so this is kind of, you know, what I was saying in the sense of quality, you know, quality fabrics for me, I brought a few in, you know, we want to look at when we do a wool. So we're going into winter in Australia. So I, I'm thinking in a winter space, obviously. So, you know, f there's fabrics like, like denim, right? Denim you can get from Zara and it's really, really good quality. And you have to go and probably feel the denim and actually sit in real life or order it and just make sure that you want thick. You want, you know, you can do stretch or non-stretch. It depends. Jacket's definitely better in non-stretch and a thicker denim. Um, and I just look for, for the way things fall so much with fabrics. For me, it's how it, how, how the shine is and how it falls. And they're the two kind of really key factors that I look at. Um, how to get out of a style rut. Pick a few pieces that you love and build them into your wardrobe for a couple of weeks, whatever that is. And if there's something that you want to buy, wear that over and over and over again. That's going to invoke a feeling of feeling really good. One thing that I think people are mindful of or, or worried about or wary of is having to create all these different looks all the time. And it's like very the most stylish people that I look up to are the people that wear the same kind of vibe every day and you never look at them and go you are the same thing every day you look at them and go gee you've nailed a look you wear that repeatedly and you just look so bloody chic don't be afraid of owning that whatever that is for you you can redo like you can redo a black coat and a blazer every single day and just change little bits different scarf color different shoe different pant whatever it is that's how I would get out of a style rut is just honoring those few pieces that you know make you feel really good and wearing them over and over again to cultivate a feeling of feeling good and then move into something else. What are your go-tos for building an elevated wardrobe for busy mum life? What are your hardworking basics? Yes. Yeah, so this is really about the daily dressing and it's about not being afraid. You know, it's what I was saying before, not being afraid of wearing the same thing over and over again. If you invest in one beautiful black coat, I have this amazing fear of God one, um, black, it's just a huge piece. It's menswear, actually, menswear. And I bought a big size in it too. Um, you know, you can you, you can re-wear these things over and over again. You can wear that, you know, with a scarf over the top of it, which I which I have here that I think is such an amazing style hack for winter. Different coloured scarves. You can get them from Zara. You can get them from Coz. You can get them anywhere. They don't have to be expensive or, you know, anything crazy. You just want a beautiful couple of colours to elevate that look. You know, you can do a fun coloured boot, you can do different sunglasses, you can do a different handbag, you know, you can dress up a simple elevated classic piece over and over again. And it actually, it's really cool to wear the same thing over and over again. I often try and wear the same thing over and over again. I just have too much shit. So I just like always have to wear new stuff. Um, but you know, it's finding that, that easy dressing in the morning as well that you're going to put on. I put a coat over everything and people are like, wow, you look so stylish. I'm like, I just put a big giant coat on. It's not actually rocket science at all. It's just putting that, that beautiful piece on and styling it up just the tiniest little bit with accessories to have that everyday elevated look. You know, we don't have to be putting together completely different looks every day. Like you don't have to change your vibe every day or have a totally different style look every day. You can just work with the same coat five, like you can have four coats and have, or four jackets and have them look so different and so chic and, and work them all around each other. Just like if you're really stuck and you want elevated, you know, basics, don't look at people that have millions of clothes. I mean, I'm one of those people, but take what you can from it in the sense of what you like about it and then finding it in your own way. I think we get so overwhelmed. We think we have to rebuild our entire wardrobes to have a daily elevated, easy look. And I know easy dressing is the hardest, hardest daily dressing, you know, just like running around in an outfit is really hard to dress for. I dress up, you know, don't be afraid to just go a little bit dressier than you need to, because why, why not? You know, these clothes that I have, they're not there to be worn once a month. They're there to be worn as much and as often as possible. So just pick the pieces that you really love and then wear them. Don't think you have to have this high, low situation of like my going out outfits and then my daily outfits. My daily outfits are literally all these beautiful pieces that some people would say 
for a dinner, but why? Like, why not get the cost per wear out of them and then justify the investment that you're making in them and wear them more often? How do you keep warm but still look chic? Yes, uh, layers, layers. And look at your fabrics. You know, cashmere, of course, is expensive. But, you know, I just bought a Venroy cashmere sweater for $300 and that's pretty cheap, in my opinion, for cashmere. So picking the fabrications that are going to give you warmth, wearing like really daggy thermals under pieces is actually a really easy, smart way to layer and feel warm and therefore not have to have that big ugly puffer on every single day in Melbourne, which I know a lot of us do. You know, I stay clear of puffers as like a principle now. I, I really don't. I mean, I have a few cropped ones that I think are cute, but my daily dressing is not really that because I try and find warmth through layers. So I can wear a blazer in Melbourne, you know, and I'll wear it because I wear a blazer, a big oversized blazer. I'll put one of these, you know, maybe a beautiful knit under it and then I'll put another layer under that of warmth and then I'll wear big thick socks and I'll wear boots that are warm. It's just being smart about that. I mean, you look at these cities like New York, London, Paris, these are cold, cold, cold cities in the winter, far colder than Australia ever is. And they look so chic. They find a way. They just scarves and, and, and gloves and layers. You know, we don't have to just put a big fucking puffer jacket on and call it a day. Like, let's make a little more effort. If you, if you want to make the effort and you're asking the questions, so like, how do I get out of this? And make the effort. It's not going to come and turn up at your doorstep a fully curated look. You have to feel that. You have to feel good. You have to feel like you want to put the work in to actually have looks that are going to make you feel really good and look really good during the day. How do I look slash feel good while watching my kids at sport on a freezing cold weekend? Well, that, that's it's the same thing. That's layers. I mean, that's also freezing and wet. So definitely let's like make sure we do the sensible shoe. I have, I have gotten this wrong. I have worn the wrong shoes to football in the morning and it's not been ideal. So do a, do a gumboot, do a really comfy big shoe, do big jeans. You can do track pants. I mean, God, I would wear a track suit, a warm, warm track suit, big coat over the top. Scarf, gloves, beanie or a hat, you know, rug yourself up in that way. Just like these tiny, tiny elements are going to make it work. And let's, let's get rid of the puffers. If you are someone that wants to elevate your look and wants to look chic at the football on a Sunday, don't wear a fucking puffer jacket. Like that is the one. I have a Prada puffer jacket and I won't wear it. Like I'm, I'm like off it at the moment because I'm like, no, I'm going to park you for a while because I want to find other ways to look beautiful and warm and chic. I wore this big black coat to the footy a few weeks ago. I had two, I had a cashmere, I had a thermal, I had a big scarf, I had big glasses on and I was, I was warm, I was toasty. So just, you know, no puffers, that's it. That's really the one rule I think we could all, and then work back from that. What about trends you never followed? Um, I, oh, look, I try not to follow trends, but at the same time, I definitely am someone that succumbs to them and that's fine because they're fun for a reason um, and often a trend is worn by really stylish people and then therefore you find it inspirational so I don't I probably don't like actively not follow a trend um, I do find some micro trends so surprising like the I don't know if you guys have seen but there's this the Alaya little studded flat at the moment it's got a little strap over it Kate did a very similar flat it's like every single person needs to have this shoe suddenly and it's one of those trends where I'm I love it from afar but I won't wear them because they just don't suit my foot like I can't really wear a flat I always need a slight elevation even though I'm super tall I just feel better with a slight elevation I rarely rarely wear flat shoes like that so that's probably a trend I'm not going to follow. It's a little micro trend. Everyone's kind of got them. Everyone's every, It's just like those things I don't quite understand because a lot of people abandon their sense of style to have the popular thing. I think for me, that's it. If a trend is aligned with my personal style, I'm going to go for it. If it's not, I'm going to have to like really question that. I mean, it took me a good couple of years to ever buy a tabby boot. And this is like one of the, I know they're very polarizing, but this is one of the ultimate fashion pieces that I think every person who loves fashion eventually probably understands and gets into. It took me a very, very long time to invest in these. And it's not even a trend, but that's just something that evolved over time. And I used to just think they were hideous and now I'm obsessed with them. Just like understanding what your personal style is. And if you follow a trend or don't follow a trend, just really only doing it or not doing it because of what your actual personal style is. How do you go about updating your wardrobe every season? Um, I don't do seasonal updates. I just buy things that are interesting and that I like. At the moment, all you know, 
the Northern Hemisphere is gearing up for summer. So we're seeing all these amazing summer pieces coming in. And I will start buying a bit of summer now because I don't want to miss out on those pieces. And I love them and I get excited and everyone's wearing them and they all go on holidays. And so I'll start building a few summer pieces now and vice versa. In our summer, I might buy a few of my coats. And I bought this guy, you know, in our, well, yeah, no, it was actually not that long ago, but I did buy it before winter. And, you know, it, it it's, it's like, I don't have an emotional attachment to things, but I've really refined what I like. And if I see things, particularly, you know, whatever time of year it is, wherever it is, like, for example, anything fluffy, I'm just obsessed with. So I will buy it no matter what, what time of year it is. I will wear it no matter what time of year it is. I love all my fluffy pieces, um, but I don't really buy in seasons. I just buy things as I see them and as I like them. And of course, at the moment, I'm not really buying any summer dresses because it's not really as cold outside. But having said that, if I see one that I love, I'll buy it. And how do you go about culling your wardrobe each season? I don't really cull my wardrobe each season, but I will go and have like a big random grab of everything that I haven't worn. I like to abide by the rule if, if I haven't worn something for a year, it has to go. But having said that, my style is evolving so much and in such a nice different way that I don't want to get rid of everything in that way because there are pieces that I've had for quite a while that I'm finally wearing now that I've probably owned for two or three years. So being really mindful of that as well um, in my own wardrobe. And I just know the pieces that I love. I will tend to more likely put things into storage if I'm iffy about them. And I just know the things that I'm like, nah, I don't want that anymore. For example, one of the Chanel, I think it's the Chanel 22. It's the bag with the chain. Um, I am selling my, my, I've got a black and a white one. I was so obsessed with them, but they just do not suit me. I've tried to keep them. I'm trying to use them and they're just not my vibe. So those kinds of things I move through pretty quickly. And I just like, I just hope I try better next time and buy smarter, but I actually buy because I buy things and I love fashion and I love what I buy now. I tend to hang on to it and I tend to cull less and less, which you know, means my wardrobe's getting bigger and bigger, but I just am really, really loving everything that I buy at the moment. So I'm not culling as much. Is it easier to get dressed now that you can afford what you really want to buy? Um, this is a very, very good question. Look, I do feel that, you know what? Yes and no, because I so clearly had my style defined when I pre-triangle. Like I pre any money, I just knew how to pull a look together I was so confident in it. I would source things from vintage and op shop and Zara and H&M and Sports Girl and Supre and whatever, and I'd put looks together and I was so proud of them. So then when Triangle started having success and I had money, I lost my way and I lost my sense of style. And I, it was so annoying because I just did not know what to buy. Like I just, I also was, you know, a new mom and it was just like a really, really challenging time for my personal style. So I've come back around and I have been really fortunate to be able to buy beautiful pieces and buy kind of whatever I want whenever I want. And there is a freedom to that in the sense of I'm just going to wear these things with confidence because I have been able to get them and they're, they're, they all have this rich, beautiful history and their design of this and luxury that. But having said that, my actual level of personal style is something that I only found again after doing a lot of self-development work. It had nothing to do with the money that I did and didn't have. And to be honest, I could pull a look together from an op shop and a vintage shop and sports girl, like just as good. I could look just as put together as I look now. In fact, I would get more of a thrill out of it because I would be able to, you know, do it like I used to do where you got to get creative, you know, to put looks together when you, it's so easy to dress when you have money and it is. And that's why I got really lost in my, in my style because I was just being really lazy. But now that I've really figured out what I love, how I want to put looks together, I could definitely pull a look from the, from the, from the up shop, I reckon, vintage shop. So now that I put my foot in it and I have put my stake in the ground and said that I can pull a look together from basically anywhere, I think we're gonna do something with this next week and maybe we will film a little mini. I will go to one of the op shops and I will put a look together and I will absolutely fucking nail it. I know that I will. Challenge is accepted that I've thrown down for myself. Um, so that's gonna be really fun. I mean, we'll see. Shoes are really fucking hard to find at the op shop. Let me tell you, I'm a 41 and like, they're really challenging, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Anyway, thank you for listening and watching to this one, guys. Find me on Instagram. I share my daily outfits on there and I love talking about fashion. So hit me up with any other questions that you have. I'll talk to you next week. Bye.